Hello, and a warm welcome to Procurement Shorts, your dose of everything making headlines in procurement and supply chain. Over the next few minutes, we'll bring you up to speed with the demand for key metals and renewable energy as the global supplies navigate a list of challenges and opportunities. As America and the rest of the world continue navigating energy transition requirements, order books for lithium, nickel, and cobalt stay in focus. But a metal that has flown under the radar is graphite. Analysts in the U.S. now predict a demand of 172,000 tons per year of the commodity for use in electric mobility alone. This is for applications in lithium-ion battery anodes within the U.S. The projection comes as America is expected to see over 200 gigawatt hours of EV lithium-ion battery capacity over the next three years, sufficient to produce 3.3 million electric vehicles per year. That is, provided each EV has a 60 kilowatt hour battery. As if on cue, graphite prices have been hitting an upside, with midstream graphite processor Hong Kong-based Graphex Group reporting a deficit in the mineral and a 20% premium in pricing. However, the company believes prices will stay stable on account of several micro and macro economic factors, starting with the absence of speculative trading of the commodity on exchanges. Graphics Technology CEO John DeMalo said, and I quote, There's also been new supply coming to the market, in particular from outside China. Supply chain issues with semiconductors have placed some speed bumps ahead of aggressive EV rollouts, end quote. But while demand for graphite isn't exactly off the charts, countries and manufacturers are slowly but surely getting supplies in place. Mozambique's graphite capacity stands at 300,000 tons per year today, while Mini Metals plans to expand capacity to 600,000 TPA at its Chinese facility. Countries like Canada and Brazil have also announced plans to mine more graphite and meet present-day requirements. It isn't just graphite that's in demand. The U.S. copper scrap market is expected to reach a valuation of $900.6 million by 2030. Market research firm Research & Markets says the market for copper scrap could grow at 4.2% CAGR between now and 2030, owing to increasing applications in foundries and ingot making. Further, downstream industries including casting, bronze making, and gunmetal are expected to boost the demand for copper scrap, while construction, electrical, mining, and oil and gas applications requirements could support this spike. But there's a supply problem. Copper life cycles have been high. Some estimates say that it's 10 to 20 years in transportation, and could go up to 30 years in construction, infrastructure, and industrial machinery sectors. What's more? Even the copper scrap that is produced tends to find its way to landfills. U.S.-based supplier Oribis has invested about $346.5 million to open a secondary smelter for copper scrap processing in Augusta. Other suppliers like the U.S. Alliance Trade Group and Unicor are also eyeing an opportunity in this space. Aside of the U.S., Asia and Europe are the two most suitable geographies for setting up processors of this scale and size. Germany and Spain could lead Europe's spike in solar power consumption, especially as summer months continue. In mid-June, solar power hit a record 36,848 megawatts in the country, which in turn saw the sun supply nearly 60% of the country's demand, according to data from Solar Energy Institute Fraunhofer. At around the same time, Spain saw 23% of its demand met by solar sources, according to figures from the national grid operator. The UK saw solar power meeting a similar percentage of demand, while Italy saw about 27% of its demand met by solar sources. The increasing consumption means that big markets like Germany and Spain are looking to boost capacities like never before. In fact, German solar capacities grew by 10% in 2021, as it added about 4.3 gigawatts, even as the government's ambitious plan of hitting 200 gigawatts in capacity by 2030 chugs along. Spanish solar capacity, too, is expected to grow by 27% CAGR in the same period. This comes even as these countries have outlined their plans to rely less on Russian fuel and spend less on coal and gas in general. The spike in consumption sees names like Solar World, the REC Group, Kyoto Solar, and Photowatt, companies that are present in Europe, stand to benefit. Demand for components, photovoltaic modules, thermal systems, and inverters could see a spike, too, in line with renewable energy goals. That's all the time we have on this episode, but do remember to log into barolive.ai to keep pace with everyday headlines. We'll see you around.